My name is Bogdan Mandic. I come from Klet Publishing House in Serbia and its two subsidiaries, uh, Novi Logos and Fresk. Uh, in the past, uh, in the last two years and in the next two years, our Ministry of Education is um, undergoing a reform which is largely based on uh, digital, uh, digitalizing the classrooms. So we, alongside with all the other publishing houses, try to uh, make content that's uh, d digital, digitalized content of our textbooks. We have tried to personalize, uh, we use MCourser, and we have tried to personalize it as much as we can and adapt it as much as we can for the Serbia system of learning. So uh, we have made, we have created, a, uh, let's say, an application that we've put on the home page that teachers can access, and sorry, with the code that they are given, uh, given from, from us, uh, they can input the code. and go into a place where they can put in uh, the usernames of their, uh, their children in the classroom and they can combine them in a file that uh, is then sent to us and we, uh, using the district administrator function, we have created all of the schools in Serbia and we put, combined the teachers and the students together. Currently we have, uh, I think, 10, about 10,000 teachers and uh, 30,000 active uh, ch uh, child users and uh, I think it's projected to triple in the next year because the project um, is going two by two grades and each year we have more and more children and, and teachers in the, on Eucionitz. And uh, we have currently uh, created, I mean, I mean to this date, we have created uh, 150 tech, uh, digital textbooks. We have two uh, different type, types of digital textbooks which my colleague Tanya will talk to you more about. And we have created uh, just below 90 uh, teacher handbooks. We are trying to create a sort of a perfect tool for teachers and students, but it's easier to create for students because you just create the textbook. Uh, we try to combine all of the materials that the uh, teacher could need uh, in one platform so the teacher could eventually just go up with a laptop to the uh, in the class and have all of their materials prepared for them, like uh, tests that they might need to print out or uh, their daily plan that goes minute by minute. So uh, now I'll let my colleague Tanya speak to you about uh, our content on mAuthor. Hello everyone, my name is Tanya, as my colleague has introduced me, and I lead the digital team that creates all digital textbooks for CLET Serbia. I'm very happy to be here today. I'd like to say that first and say thank you to Author and Lenetic for inviting us here today to show you our products and for helping us on this journey. As my colleague said, we've been on this journey for two years now. And as the curriculum changes and as the teachers become more adapt to digital textbooks, so our textbooks change over time and we use some additional options. I will present to you two of our digital types. First, we have the multimedia PDF. We call it an enriched PDF. And we started using that uh, heavily in the first year and a bit less now in the second year as um, sort of a bridge between old school teachers who are used to printed textbooks and the teachers who will be more accepting of the digital content. As you can see for the PDF and for the digital textbook, we have different icons to differentiate them in the catalog, as you can see here different types of icons and also the structure of the textbook is different. For the digital textbook we went with more smaller lessons so the teachers could access them easier in class. I will now show you side to side what that looks like. Here you can see that the, with, with the multimedia PDF, we have the entire textbook and icons on the side. That is a very standard approach that you're all very familiar with, so I won't go in depth with that. But here we have our digital textbooks, and I'll explain our environment a little bit. As you can see, the top, the header, is uh, completely the same and that is to train teachers slowly to go into the digital textbook. So that was done intentionally. We have the content that shows the entire lesson, all the single pieces, because sometimes a lesson can't be uh, done within one class. You plan that, but that's not how it always turns out in the classroom. So we have that option. We made a tab for video where you can play the videos 
instantly or you can go to a specified page where they are located and they usually have some additional exercises with them. But also what is interesting is the changes that we've done inside the editor in itself. This list is automatically generated by adding a module for video, filling it up and then via a script it uh, generates the list both for video, for audio, this lesson doesn't contain audio, we usually have that in lower grades, and for the links. And for this year, we st we've tweaked the um, uh, Hamartha editor a bit more. Sorry for hacking your product. But we've added some additional modules, additional options. It's not something that I will be showing now because it is still in production. But each year, we add something different. But we actually added our own drop down menus with our own. Uh, modules and our own instructions for them. We've added uh, color coding for the modules list so that we have a co color for the programmers for the modules that they use, a color for the designers and a special color for the um, scripts and modules that are not ever touched. Uh, then we have the dictionary. Uh, this gave us uh, the pain in the beginning when we were just uh, making it, but now it works quite fine. It works with both keyboards because um, Cyrillic keyboards are not automatically installed on all systems. And we've turned off that option for Serbian language, of course, uh, when you have Serbian textbooks. But in all other textbooks, we want to avoid our users having to install different keyboards because you never know where they're going to access the textbook itself. Here we have the standard tool set and of course uh, little um, instructions for using the digital textbook where it explains all the little icons and there's a helpful little link at the bottom that takes you to the documentation page and you can see our video instructions, our um, teacher PDF that explains uh, more in-depth steps, how to register, how to unlock the textbook, because I don't think my colleague mentioned that, but the PDFs are distributed to all of our users. They're printed into the printed textbooks on the front page with a little instruction, and the digital textbooks are distributed to teachers through uh, the ministry um, program, and the ministry pays for it. That gave us quite uh, a bit of wind in our back. And um, they get the extra option of using the LMS. And you've seen our um, my colleague has demonstrated how we connect the teachers and the students because we really work with a lot of teachers and students. And I think Caroline mentioned that um, teachers are not very open to showing that they're tech savvy because they're afraid that they will get extra um, tasks from their schools. So we don't have district admins in schools. So, and not all of schools have administrators. So we actually took that upon us and we used this application and threw it teachers input data. So we don't really um, hold the real names or data of the students. Uh, I would like to show you some of our examples. This is everything that we've made locally in our um, publishing house, in our team. This is a little um, game made in HTML5 and imported as an object that works offline through the iframe. The students can pick a little uh, avatar, roll the dice, and it stops on a certain uh, segment of this caterpillar. It's called caterpillar. And the, uh, it pulls up an item, and the item has to be matched with the correct Latin alphabet. It's for the second grade. In the first grade, they only learn Cyrillic letters, but in the second, we introduce the Latin alphabet. So this helps them learn it. If they get bravo, that's, uh, it tells them that they did a good job. It gives them a, uh, uh, information that they're doing well, and they can restart the entire game or just keep on playing from that point. And it can be played both in the classroom and at home. What is important is to know that all of our textbooks are work type textbooks. They're completely interactive. We don't make workbooks separately. We do have teacher materials, as my, my colleague said, and they are within, uh, 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 let me just pop out here for a minute. 
they are within the textbook itself and they are marked as school teachers materials so only the teachers that were input into schools who are in the project who are checked can see them and you can see it here it's called a priročnik this is somewhat something that we've made directly in mauthor using javascript and the student is supposed to mark certain letters and if he marks them correctly the correct group of letters uh, like vowels or something, if he gets a feedback message telling them if they've done a good job or not. Here we have one of our videos, it shows how to write Cyrillic letters. This is a simulation we made for mathematics for lower grades and it shows the comparison between different sized animals. First we started doing it in Omotha directly and it uh, went well for a while, it didn't go bad, it didn't really go bad, uh, but then we realized that we might need it as a standalone object for some of our, for QR codes or for something else, so in the end we produced it as an HTML5 object that can be exported. And you have different animals, you have information about them, and on the side you have a little text that tells the kids something interesting about the animal. This is a simulation that we uh, first created completely in mAuthor, just using the modules, and it worked fine. And then we realized that we're going to need it externally, so we popped it into an HTML5. But it did work in mAuthor. Uh, it shows uh, children, uh, movement, and what impacts movement, like uh, different textures of the floor, or different environments, or different objects. We have three different versions. This is the one with the surfaces, two little cars, you pop them and they roll for a bit and then you can, you have a question for the students where the teacher can use this in the uh, classroom to start a discussion to see what they've learned about movement. Here we have the same thing, you just use different objects and see how they move on the same surface and in the same environment. And then there's the environment, where you just sink these levels into something, oil, water, and you see how that impacts them. But we, we had a lot of fun making this. This is made completely in mAuthor, and we didn't pop it out. We liked it the way it is. Uh, here we have an analog clock, the module we used, uh, the digital one, and in the background you have an image, and the image is controlled. The image is actually round, we have two, but if you're interested in details, I can explain it later, the technical parts. And when you roll the hands of the clock, it shows the different changes. So the children can, collect, can connect the analog clock, which they don't see that often anymore, with the digital clock that they do see everywhere, and with something that is already familiar to them, and that is the changes of the light in nature. This is one of our exercises in Emotha where you have to see how the caterpillar grows and the little phases move. And of course, you check it, you have little stars. For lower grades, we use stars. For the upper uh, grades, we use the classic percentage. We made this for music class so they can play it. Some schools really don't have a lot of equipment in Serbia. It's probably the same in some other countries too, but they don't have labs, they don't have equipment, they don't have musical instruments, or you have students that don't have something like that at home. So these digital textbooks are supposed to enable them to have some sort of access to that. Here we had something similar to uh, The Sims game. Anyone played that? No? Oh, too bad. Uh, but you can arrange furniture inside a house and it can show you whether it's supposed to be in their room, green background, or not supposed to be red background. And you can switch where you want to put it and you can rotate it and you can build your own house like that. That's also an activity for lower grade. This is something made completely out of modules in mAuthor by combining them with the advanced connector option. You can click to choose one of the options. You can type in your solution or you can type in the final solution. And as soon as you type in the correct option, I didn't check anything, it tells you if you've um, 
solved everything correctly and opens up all of the options. And then we had a different request for associations. This is one. And this is the other where you have to pull the items. They, you have little descriptions here for each of the columns. Then you type in the solution and you have the final solution. So it combines different exercises, also completely made in Amatha. This is made by combining images with hotspots. Same here, where you can overlay different images. I think you all know those options. Uh, this is something we've recreated as well. Uh, you have a map, and then it shows you additional options. You have the timer, you have an items, a number of correct answers in the corner, and you can click on these options and you get the correct solution so you can remember it for the next time. And you, as soon as you, it's correct, it switches over to the next one and you are entitled to, I think, three or four mistakes. It depends a bit on the textbook. We've done a lot of animations like this. These are made with single state and double state buttons or with a bit of uh, CSS. But what is interesting is that we've, uh, for this year, we've changed our CSS a little bit. And now you can make uh, connections between these buttons and the items on the page just by changing the ID in the editor. You no longer have to connect them manually, like put in two models, put a text, put a button, connect them in the background, use an advanced connector. No, we all have that in the background. You just change the ID of the button and it, it has all kinds of different function, functions. We have text that pops on on hover. We have drop down menus. Um, we have items that um, animate like this. We've also used the ID option to uh, make automated animated uh, headlines. Uh, so you can just use the like uh, text one slash um, I think bounce or something like that. We gave it some names. And then it just bounces into the page. So we no longer have to program each um, headline on its own. So we, we really worked a lot on automating all kinds of different parts. And we've also made uh, this button. Uh, with a change of ID also uh, simulates pop-ups and because the exercise pops up on the page itself it can be checked by the bottom menu so um, we had some instances where we wanted to make an exercise on a pop-up but then when the teacher uh, assigns that page to the student the exercise is not on it it's on a different page and we had some trouble with that so now we made a pop-up that sim uh, a button, sorry, that simulates a pop-up, and it just uses the visibility option, opacity option, zero to one. Anyone? No. Okay, never mind. But it just it makes the exercises on the page already. It just makes it visible, so we can use the same check bar. And since we've automated that, and it's just uh, connected with a change of ID on two modules. We no longer have an extra step of a designer creating the page, adding all the elements, and then sending that to the programmer who connects all the appropriate parts, and then that goes to the editor to check it, and etc. and etc. I'm going to stop here because of the time, but thank you very much for your attention. And if <laughs>